Hello gamers! It's SoftKitty99 in the creative builds world in Minecraft and after building the brownstone home I thought, do you know what? That's a lovely house and there's so much more that we can do with it. We can adapt it internally and we can also make it bigger externally. So I thought let's do an additional episode based on this brownstone home design. So this is the initial house that we built right here on the corner and right next to it using the brownstone home part one video I've built two more houses right next to it and I'd like to use these to show you what I was thinking about with different ways that we can adapt the building. So the houses currently have got to the point at the end of the brownstone home part one video. So to build them yourselves, if you follow the Brownstone Home Part 1 video, I'll link that in the description below the video for you, this is what you'll end up with. This one has got the roof on it, just as the first one did, and this middle one I'd actually like to take up an extra level, so what I've done is I've put in a floor of the dark oak planks in order to fill in for another floor section in order to add an additional floor section to this. So what I want to do is lift up this building by an additional layer. So we want to go up by one, two, three, four, five. Now don't forget we're going to want to put in the corner blocks later with the smooth stone. So don't forget to come back and do that later. So what I'd like to do is use this all the way around. What we want to do is take the brick all the way along to the front, make sure it's in line with where the smooth stone bricks are here, and then across the front of course. And it's probably easier to just do in a fill command. So let's do that. We'll use the, the block we're using is bricks. So to use the fill command, put your cursor on the first block that you want to start with, type fill and then pick up the coordinates for your block using the tab command, go across to where you want to go up to, pick up the coordinates for that block like so and then use the tab again it will bring up the minecraft command and this time you want to put in the block you're going to want to use and we're using the bricks and that will fill that in just so. And then we use the fill command again to do that on all of the walls around the top of this building. Make sure you pick up all the correct coordinates as you go around. The builds themselves are 17 by 15, the 15 is along the back and front and the 17 along the length of the side. And that's the same diameter for all of the builds that we've got here on this little row. And the walls here where you have two buildings joined count towards that total number of blocks for both of the houses on either side of that wall just so that you get your dimensions correct that's 17 including that's that's 15 from across the front of the build including the conjoining walls don't make each of the buildings 15 wide right next to each other because that will make them one block too wide. I hope that that's clear for you. This middle wall here is used for both of the buildings either side of this wall. Oh, I managed to miss one look. <laughs> if you do like I did and you manage to miss one of your blocks out, make sure that you do fill it in because it's going to look very, very silly if your building has a hole in it like that. just finish filling this one in like so, so that we've got the extra layer of building. So that means that my middle one of my three buildings is going to be one floor 
taller than the other buildings at the sides of it. And then of course we're going to want to adjust the top of the building like we did with the initial build. There you can see my middle building is now one floor taller than the ones around it, which adds a little bit more depth and character to the build itself. So let's just double check. We want the ceiling height to be four in all of the rooms. So one, two, three, four. And then on the top, we're going to have the roof. So that's perfect. I want my roof to be with the smooth sand, smooth stone. Let's take a look at that. So smooth underscore stone. So we want to fill in across the top of the building using the smooth stone just as we did with the other buildings to the side, to the right and to the left. So adjust this to be smooth stone. Smooth stone. And that will fill in all the way around. And then on the edge of the building, we want to use the half slabs of the smooth stone to give the roof a tiny overhang around the width of the building and to give it that little bit of depth and structure to make it just that little bit prettier in the centre of your town. So we go all the way around the building. So now we've got one of the brown stones which is taller than the other ones. Now if you're building an entire row of these brown stones you do want them to have a little bit of difference in them though you want them all to be fairly uniform so that they all look like they were built roughly at the same time and all match in with one another. So here as you can see we've now got one that is that little bit taller than all of the others. So I'd like to make the buildings just a little bit different. Now the first one that we built last week is a private home. The whole building is one home all by itself. Now we have one that is four floors and another one that is three floors. This one in the middle that is now four floors tall, I'd like to turn this one into two two-floor houses. Now, shall I say that again? I'd like to turn this one into two two-floor houses. So the floor below street level and the one at street level will be one house and then the two floors above that will be the second house. Which means that we have to adjust the way you get into the building in order to give both houses separate access. So the first thing I want to do is to use these stone bricks to place in a couple of blocks as access point and then we want to go up using the steps to the first door like so and let's change this to the stone slab for the door step and we will want to put in a door like so for here that will now be access to the top floor because internally what we're going to want to do, we're going to need some torches so that we can see. Let's pop in a torch right above the door and another one over here. Let's pop torches above the doors just so that gives us a little bit more light and make it a little bit easier to see. So what we're going to need to do is make access so that it is separate from the ground floor and the upstairs are going to be separate. So we need to put in some space. Now how far back are we going to need this to be? Because we're going to have to have access upstairs. So what we're going to need to do is knock out a few of these blocks so that we can build in the stairs. Let's use the nether brick stairs So we're going to want access to the upstairs here, along here. And I want to make sure that we've got enough space here, you see. 
So two blocks away from the door, the stairs will start to go up and this will lead us to the upstairs, which is where we're going to have access to our first floor Let's not put the let's put torches either side and let's run this all the way up and down so that no one will fall through. Put the wall all the way up so that no one is going to have any problems and fall through. Let's run it all the way up and down. And this of course now has given us access. To the house that we're going to have at the top of this building. So now we have the stairs leading down and out of our front door. Straight into our house up here and we are of course going to need space for the stairs up to what will be your bedroom area. If I can get the stairs to go in the right places. So now we have a two block gap here at the top of your stairs to lead you up to where your bedroom area will be. Don't forget to knock out a few of the blocks in order to get access up to here. And this room, of this floor of course, the top floor will be where your bedrooms are for your upper layered house. Now you have a choice here, you can leave the stairs open so that you've got a little alcove space here for use or you can run a wall along and block that off as just access up to the other floor. That depends on how you would prefer to do it and how you want to break up the upstairs area. So you'll have your living area down here on the first floor and your bedrooms and things on the second floor. So that's one house. Now the second house of course will have access at the bottom down here. So if we come to the side and grab our stairs, we will then run the stairs down into this basement area. And we can fill in the gaps underneath the stairs. Like so. In fact, we can reference back to the first one and just see, is that what we did here? It's roughly the same, except that I used the stone brick underneath that set of stairs and this time I've used the smooth stone. So you can use whichever one you prefer personally. So that now we have access to one house up there and a second house down here. So all we need to do now is to pop in our door. Some light just so you can see what we're doing. And this house, of course, is now going to need access to stairs up to the back of the house. So let's come a couple of blocks away. One, two, three, four. And let's run our stairs in here. And now we have stairs. And I'm going to block off underneath the stairs which was the access area for the upstairs flat to get up here. We still can get into our rooms for our house. This is where we'll have our bedroom area and then downstairs is where we'll have our living area for this under underneath house. So we have two two floor houses basically one on top of each other and they each have their own access into the building. So we have the ground floor flat and the upstairs flat up here. And then for my third one what I'd like to do is I'd like to add this one into three separate flats. So first thing we're going to do is need to pop in a couple of bricks here. 
and then we want access via the stairs to the first access point here. And we're also going to want access down to the basement flat area. Let's pop the supports underneath where the stairs are. this to a brick so that we can pop the door in. So that's access to the ground flat or basement flat and then here we will want to first pop that in here and pop in a door. Now we have a choice here, do we give them all separate entrances on the street or do we give them a shared access point here? For these two flats here, do they get one door or do they get two doors? You could do it either way. The easiest way of course is to give them a, a shared front door and then inside here you add a different access point. So what you do is you have one door here and one door here and then you add walls around it. So if you put a partition wall in here above where the doors are and to the side of the doors, this will then allow both of them to have access. And we are of course going to need the floor to be broken into here so that we can put in our stairs. We need to make sure that we're far enough back to pop in our stairs. I don't think that's close enough. Right, so we come inside the door. One, two, and then let's put the stairs up so we can see where we need to be. But if I can pop it in. And we're going to need a torch obviously to see because I can't I can't quite see. Right, that's better. Right, so now we've got stairs leading all the way up. If I knock enough steps up to get in. There we go. So we have our access point here for flat one and our access point for flat two, right here. Now we need to extend our wall here. we have access to the different flats. So we now have access for all three flats. So as you can see now we've got one brownstone which is just a family home. We've got a second brownstone which now has two different two floor houses in it and we have a third one with three separate flats in it. The big brownstones when they originally would have been built would have been built to be family houses but over the years many of them have been separated out into different types of houses and flats to accommodate the change in population. So that's what we've done here, we've changed it to adjust to the population that we have now. At the front of the houses we're going to add onto our wall so I'd like to have one, two, three, then put a wall too high, then one, two, three, and a wall too high, and then one, two, three, and a wall too high. Let's do that in front of the next one. One, two, three, two bricks of brick, one, two, three, gap, two bits of brick, one, two, three, gap, two bits of brick. Sorry, I want the slab, the stone slab, to put on top of each of those sections of two high bricks to cap it off to make it pretty and then I will also want the 
iron bars is fencing and we'll fill in the gaps with the iron bars to provide our pretty fencing for the front of our buildings. And then the only other thing we've got to do is decide where we're putting our windows and where we want to put our any extra internal walls and our furniture that we're going to want to put in to decorate. All of those things are going to be personal preference depending on who you decide is your target audience for sitting and living in your houses. For instance, the family houses, do they have need we need one bedroom because it's just a couple? Do they need two or three because they've got children? The flats, if it's an individual person, and are you going to just have one bedroom in them and a big lounge area? Or would you think that it might be two friends sharing so each of them would want a big bedroom? Is it going to be a couple with a child? Will they need an extra bedroom to be added into the flat area? You can accommodate them all any way you want, any way you choose, depending on what you think. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had that type of person in here? I think I'd like to do the windows the same as I did on my very first building. So if you think about it, Here I've got one, two, three, four windows and then one in the hallway area at the side of the build. So if we leave a gap of one, two for windows and then a In fact we can't do that on that one because that's where we've got our wall, isn't it, for where our stairs are. So it might actually be better to do the w them from the inside rather than the outside, mightn't it? And that way we're not going to mess up where we put our windows. Ha ha ha! Because I have changed the internals of the building so it's a little bit more difficult to see than it was originally. So let's start with the basement, shall we, over here and pop the windows in. I should have put more lights on, shouldn't I, inside the building so that it's easier for you to see what I've done. Let's put lights front and back and add. In fact, we should start around the back of the building because where the basement flat is, of course, you've got very limited access points. Around the back, of course, I've also added a communal garden area for the back of the three flats. None of the houses actually have access directly to the garden, so what you need to do is come through the gate here, which is led to by a path around the side of the building. So it's a community access area for all the brownstones, just to make it a little bit more different. So if we come to in here, and add a night light area. <laughs> right, so the wall is here, so if we leave a gap of one and then put windows in every other one until we get close to the wall again, that's going to work, yep. Yeah. And then here, if we leave two and put a light in and then come from the opposite side, leave a space, put a light, leave a space, a skylight, space skylight that's going to work quite well very nice and then if we try and do the windows the same as we did over here we're going to need these stone so if we come in line here let's see what we did we lift a gap of one and then a gap of three so a gap of one then a gap of three one two three yeah and that should put them in line with the skylights at the bottom of the build right here like so so a gap of one perhaps we should move the skylight across there so that it's in line let's get them all in line so that it looks right much better if things are in line and then above right above where we've got the skylights put in and then we want to go up by two and put in another stone brick and then the two gap that we've got we will need to fill in with the glass one two 
and window onto and window. Use the glass to fill in like so and continue to do that up and down your build until you're happy with where you've got all your windows. Put in our glass. Our glass, I didn't put the stone in on this one. Oops. Don't knock out the wrong places, kitty. Let's reapply that block and the smooth stone at the top. There we go. And then if we go up again, gap of one, put in the smooth stone. stone at the top and the bottom every time and then put the glass in the between in the middle and we're getting there now see one one two one one two for glass and one two for glass and one stone two for glass and one put the glass in those and then you want to go down around to the front of the building and repeat all of this so that you've got light coming in at the front and the back but bear in mind that we have put some walls in different internal places and make sure that you're not trying to put the glass right in front of a wall like I did around the front which will look very very strange and then think about how you want to change your different buildings Do you want more flats? Do you want more houses? How would you like to change your buildings to fit in with the city or the town that you yourself want to build? And once you do it that way, hopefully you'll have lots more inspiration in different ways to use this sort of style of building and in different ways of changing them and adapting them to fit the circumstances that you want them in to be in for yourselves. I'm going to go away and play with the front of the buildings, do some internal furnishings and then I'll come back and play some music while I give you a look at what I've done with the rest of it. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. From Softkitty99, hope this has given you some inspiration and I'll see you in the next one. Happy gaming!